for a game. <laughs> Rafael Bittencourt. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Kiko, my so, friend, my brother. My friend since uh, 80 something. 88. I was 17 years old. We were, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you were one year older than me. Not, than me. not actually. Um, 10 months. 10 months, all right. First of all, for our Brazilian friends, it might be weird that we're speaking English. You know, the channel has a lot of international people. All right. <laughs> right? Yeah. So we're going to do in English so we can talk and everybody can understand. But we're going to put some uh, subtitles. subtitles here in, fans in Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Rafael came here for the NAM show in Los yes. Angeles. I have the pleasure to have him here to get to know my daughter, my kids. Yeah, and, and it's the first time I see you here in your uh, mm. office, music, <laughs> room, studio where you do yeah. your videos. It's so nice to be here. I mean, seeing you as a friend, as a brother, someone that I admire, and now we get to talk and remember a few of our... Yeah, so the idea here, uh, let's see what's gonna happen. We don't know, we just turn on we the camera. We were having a chat, why not turn on the camera? I would like to kind of try to remember the old days, maybe see our life timeline, if yeah. it's possible. I mean, if we, if we have time, because if... it's... It's a long timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember but, when I met you. Yeah. Yes. The very first time. I was forming another band like two years before Angra. And Marco Antunes, our first drummer, he gave me a call and said, well, there's this dude in the other side of Sao Paulo, in the other side of the town. He can play in half of a <laughs> second. He's playing one arpeggio with the whole extension of the fretboard. We go like, oh, that was like... Well, remember, like, there was no YouTube, there was nothing, even in Sao Paulo, no, not even like a instructional videos or VHS, nothing. It was hard to find one good instrument. Exactly. It was hard to find a good teacher to, oh, yeah. to, to teach you, like, the Van Halen licks. Basically, we're learning like was, chords, acoustic guitar, Brazilian music, basically. Yeah. You know, it was like someone telling you at school that somebody could play an Ed Van Halen lick in another town. You you would take a bus just to see that guy, like, doing the eruption. And yeah. we went there to your place. You didn't call us in to your home because you, we, you like, were who, very suspicious. Who are those guys? You know, yeah, like. you were very suspicious because we gave him a call. We want to meet you. We want you to join our band. And he was, like, very suspicious. Uh, and it was our first time. Yeah, you I accepted. accepted the invitation. We then didn't we... see him playing that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, okay, yeah. Just the rumors yeah. of... Uh, and then the guy, the guy was saying, good... like, yeah. wait till you see him doing it. I mean, we went back home without seeing anything. <laughs> it was already rare enough to find someone willing to make a metal band. Yeah, well, in Brazil, you can't imagine to make a, you know, to start a metal band in yeah. the late 80s. A few years later, we started Angra. We did a, more, a, a, demo on a more tape, professional level. And more for trying to be more professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had like this, could say, like a mission as a band. We didn't say things like this back yeah. then, but it was kind of the mission was like, okay, we're gonna combine metal with Brazilian music, with our traditional music and yeah. some classical things. Classical because you, stuff. You were yeah. doing the uh, university, yeah. right? Then we had this vision of. We're gonna conquer the world. Yeah, <laughs> and we were we seventeen, nineteen. We I, was, <laughs> I was like, we were nineteen. We wanted to be genius musicians and rich as fuck, <laughs> and famous and popular. And playing heavy metal playing in heavy Brazil, metal. singing in English <laughs> and playing like with, mixing with, with Brazilian percussions stuff. and African drums. But we, very, did, we, we made it. It, it, right? was a, it was a hard mission. It was a hard mission, but then. Angel Scribe was the first album and it was released yeah. in 93 uh, and we went to Germany to record because in Brazil there was not really a, a metal studio or metal producers, right? Yeah. And the good thing is that we... Um, Let me see if you if you remember that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one like a... <laughs> Streets of Tomorrow. Yeah. So it was a and what a memory. I remember it. Yeah. Basically, the compositions were always like this, right? Acoustic guitar and singing yeah, melodies. Yeah. We were combining. And the the after the riffs and the metal, we were always very concerned on the chords and melodies. 
together in the structure. I remember us in a farm during the pre-production for Holy Land researching the Beatles songbook. Oh yeah. Remember yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And we and were playing, playing the Beatles songs. So we would get the nice structures for chords and melodies and lyrics for the basic songwriting. And then we would uh, improve the arrangement into a metal thing, you know. The double bass and heavy yeah, guitars and, heavy and long guitars. solos and many parts and uh, not, yeah. not, totally not like the Beatles structure. Yeah. <laughs> like a seven minutes long song. Then the, the first album, Angels Cry, was released in Japan and we won a gold yeah. disc. For us, like as a kid, like, really? Like gold disc? <laughs> we went gold disc. <laughs> first record, we were very young, very immature, very unprepared. In many ways, that's why they didn't want they didn't want us to, to perform live to tour in, in Japan. Japan. They like no, no. They no. say okay, you guys are good, but stay there in Brazil, practice more. Maybe when you're ready, go to Europe. Yeah, it's like you have to tour in Brazil, have to tour in Europe. Maybe then you're gonna be ready to come to Japan because people are yeah. here like they want to see a great yeah, show. Yeah, after a gold record, they wanted a huge band. I mean, yeah. performing. Perfectly, perfectly, or a nice uh, yeah. showbiz, the way it should be, yeah. right? The whole glam, the glamorous thing that we thought <laughs> it would be to be a rock star. No glamour at no, all. No, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. That's a good reminder. Go disc in Japan, but in Brazil, right, nothing. Uh, no Instagram to post your, your nice oh, yeah, go yeah, disc, yeah, you yeah, I mean, to spread the word. Showing people, yeah. you know, showing off. Oh, I'm a gold disc guy now. So like, no way. No. So like, we went back to Brazil. We, so we, just the mother oh, teaching oh. guitar lessons. I mean, yeah. back Rehearsing, to our normal yeah. lives. Second album, then, Holy Land. Then we wanted even more to get this idea of uh, Brazilian music yeah. to be more ethnic. Because the first record, we wanted to experiment the Brazilian stuff, the Brazilian spice on the rhythms, on the harmonies. On the way we think music, because we've learned music from the Brazilian songs. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. I mean, the Brazilian music was the first learning for not rock music. And we have a, what? <laughs> And then what else? Oh, well, of course, the. I see. the oh. Remember that? Let's try again. I remember when this this was a very good riff. Well, oh, thank you. No, this was a very good riff. I remember when you, when you started creating it with Ricardo doing also very cool drumming on it. And right from the start we could hear it was something fresh. I mean, it was 1993, but 94, I think. 90, 94, 94, right? We recorded in 95. But actually the riff was something I don't, I, I don't know if I remember. It was like... Yeah, it was different. Like. Yeah, that was the original. This was the original, very simple one. Then you've done one like was hugely complicated, like impossible to play. Yeah. You would be the only person in <laughs> planet Earth playing that one. And then you've made, you simplified it. It was based on a samba groove that Ricardo, yeah. the drummer, came with the idea very good. at first, right? Yeah. Okay. And suddenly this album, uh, mixing the percussion, the Brazilian stuff, our I first idea, right? The Europe like it, right? So we started yeah. like fr mainly France, Italy, Spain, even like the record label was um, uh, the, German, the German, yeah, the German, the German, the German. Uh, the thing label. is that the, the 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 power metal scene was very strong in Germany. It was like based in Germany. They had like uh, Halloween, of course, Gamma Ray, Iron Blind Savior, Garden. Iron Savior, yeah, Blind Garden. So the power me metal scene was very around the German scene. But we we didn't want... To be power metal? Yeah, to, to, to change our roots just to fit in. We wanted to state 
that we were different, that we come from a tropical country, that we come from Brazil, with all our influences. And we had, and then we had like Queen or Queensryche and some yeah, other bands I mean, as influence, right? Yeah, yeah. they were or experimenting. They were always trying to bring something, something new. Something different, yeah. But then after that, Holy Land, and then Fireworks. Yeah. So the band was already quite popular in Europe. We had Bruce Dixon coming to our yeah. concert in France, in Paris, Bruce to Dickinson sing. Had, had left Maiden. Yeah. So I he remember the record him. company telling him it would be good for him oh, yeah. to, to, be, to take part in our concert as a guest. So can you imagine how big Angra was in France? So yeah. Bruce Dickinson would, would take yeah. some advantage, I mean. <laughs> be, but like, like Maybe course, like a year I later mean, or something. It's he, not. He, it's not like exactly like this with me. It's nice to it, believe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good story, anyway. It's a good story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I remember there was this difficult thing that you created. For me, it was always very difficult, but it, it doesn't seem like, but it is. Right. Yeah, it was supposed to. Yeah, it was a it's kind a of a groovy. It's like Brazilian a paradido, groove. right? Is that yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, metal icarus. Exactly. That's I tried to play like this, but it was it's hard. It was always hard. Yeah, Rafael was always. We're like doing something, and it always comes with the that idea, <laughs> like the idea that takes you to the some, 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 some other, yeah, so now the place of oh, that's what it, to get know, out of the obvious to, to, to get, get out, out of the, the obvious. obvious. It could you know? be incredible. Sometimes but there's so many incredible stuff, you know. Sometimes sounds a bit crazy, so we need some time to yeah. digest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. But normally it's good, and then because yeah. it's coming from you, okay, yeah. it sounds a bit you know crazy. Sometimes but I get too confident. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. So, then, yeah, the the band went uh, yeah. separate ways, right? Yeah. Huge broke up. As okay. most of the bands, you yeah. know, which is crazy if you think about it. You're like, it was like what uh, nine years, a lot of effort, yeah. a lot of work. We could Putting, finally play in Japan. We could finally play in Japan. We were, I mean, um, we felt prepared. Yeah, and uh, this uh, co uh, tours in Europe and all that, and suddenly. And uh, we got we got the offer to join the sanctuary, the Iron Maiden. Remember, oh, yeah. Iron Maiden uh, management. You know we, that. We so had an offer from John Kalander. John Kalander, like the who was like managing Journey and Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses. Yeah, many huge artists. But then. And then <laughs> we're like, oh no. No, no, we decided to <laughs> to split. All right. <laughs> so me and Rafael, or Rafael and me. Uh, okay, let's start all over. Yeah, we had Rebirth. to start. We had to start the name of the over. album yeah. then was Rebirth. It was a tough, it was tough, tough period, you know, to rebuild the whole thing that I've been doing for nine years. And but we had something which was the friendship, very important, and the concept, right? The musical the concept, concept already and the music established. Connection. Let's hire three other people: the singer, and bass and drums. Yeah. And it was yeah, which so was great. Edu, Achilles, and uh, Felipe, nice. because then great musicians, and then actually we we got. I could say even a better band or like a different, mm -hmm. but as as good as or better. Please the good thing, Rebirth the good, good thing is that um, these new guys, they were not emotionally involved with a breakup. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that was good. Emotionally very fresh, willing to 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 present their bests. They just wanted people to hear, to listen to their talents. To their music, musical gifts, so it was it was good. It for brought us, right? a freshness yeah. for us because we were so much emotionally involved with the tension of the whole fact that we were breaking up it's, with. That's probably I mean, you know anybody that has a band like probably yeah. been through that mm -hmm. somehow. And I remember when you brought this riff.
it was a good moment. And then I was kind of like, I showed that, and then you start developing another chords. Like maybe in a few hours, we kind of had the song. Right? It's funny. Yeah. The best songs they come like, man, till, easily. I mean, somehow. until today, the fans always love to hear it. I mean, Brian does a lot of a lot of a lot of fancy guitar playing too, like lots a lot of, of stuff. Of stuff. So it's a great album. The whole band was kind of integrated. Yeah, also in Europe, people were surprised. Edu is a great singer. Achilles is an amazing drummer. And Felipe is uh, still there, like a um, player, like bass player, and musician. The best bass player in the world. <laughs> then Temple of Shadows, which was like yeah. the next step for as a as a vision as a com as composers and band, yeah. right? Probably one of our greatest uh, masterpieces. Yeah, yeah. The Temple so of Shadows. So if you don't know Angra, I start from there. Yeah, <laughs> start from there. On Rebirth, we we still needed to convince people that we were keeping the, um, the original concept that the, those musicians were very good and prepared to be in Angra but we were still not very confident because of the whole thing of the uh, changing three people in the lineup but after the huge success of Rebirth we I think we were feeling more confident to yeah. experiment to experiment again to go deeper on our our references from prog, prog rock bands from the 70s, like Rush, Genesis, or Pink Floyd. So we went down on really experimenting sounds and arrangements and compositions. Like if you don't know about Angra, listen to Morning Star. There's a long song with many it's parts. It's a long song with many parts, but it's heavy, but... It has a maracatu, which is a Brazilian rhythm. Yeah. Right. With the guitar, right? With the guitar and then the yeah, percussion. It's very interesting. A long yeah. song, many parts. If you're a guitar player, there's some interesting things there. To fast stuff. Yeah. Very fast. We've right. played this one just recently. Oh yeah. With the new lineup, yeah. It is it is fast, oh, yeah. It there's so a lot of fast stuff there. <laughs> On the acoustic yeah. guitar, impossible. Spreader fire. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And the lyrics, you know, it was a big thing, like because it was a very conceptual album. I truly believe that the lyrics can make a song last longer. The times that I really found a strong combination between music and lyrics, the song became stronger. That's uh, right, like Rebirth, or like, like so Rebirth, many yeah, songs from, from Temple Shadows. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be a composer before I, I wanted to be a, a guitar player. I remember that, yeah. yeah. Like I didn't want to be... In the early a, days, I remember yeah. you talking about that. I want to be like Frank Zappa or whatever, or like O'Queen. Yeah, Queen or, like Brian yeah. May or, yeah. or Fred Mercury, you know. I wanted to as be a, a composer, good composer. Yeah. And I still is, because it's a hard thing. I, I'm, I don't feel that I've reached where I want what, as a composer yeah I think there's a normal feeling that it's you, a normal you, feeling you can do it's, which is a good like feeling it's an endless I road do, it's an endless yeah. road I can do better so then you keep going you know keep practicing keep studying yeah. keep doing keep touring or recording because you always like I want to do one day I'm going to yeah. write that song you know but you did already you don't know you're right maybe, maybe you don't you feel it but there's so many people that your songs change it uh, their lives. So Rebirth that songs always, or yeah, that always. Time, you know, from you know, first album, you know, this, this to, song called Time, yeah. right? We have our interesting uh, music video. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the light shining in my eyes. So after Temp of Shadows, we did, well, Aurora Consurgence. Aurora Consurgence. And, um, I mean, Aqua. Back, yeah. And, uh, always trying to bring whatever was happening to the band or our personal personal lives we tried to express with the music we had a, some tension already among the musicians 
and all that tension is there in the album and the lyrics are also expressing tension and mental issues like mental pathology mm -hmm. yeah. so it's a very tense album and I love it yeah because I know it's real it's honest it's hard to listen it's not, it's a different atmosphere but I like totally, it. Yeah. Then we did Aqua and then we did... Uh, that was the one we Then had. Ricardo Confessori was back to the band. Then Secret Garden. Oh yeah, Secret Garden. Then it started to take longer in between records. Yeah, it was, so... It was but our I was first here record already. with Fabio in the vocals. Yeah, Fabio. Right. And then I... Then 2015 I joined Megadeth. Oh yeah. So, because then it was 2014 was when we recorded. That was a, another tough moment. <laughs> But uh, I felt so happy. We all felt so happy. I was probably one of the first. The yeah, new the first, yeah. yeah you I were like you heading the airport. We're like, yeah, right, right, right. I feel so guilty. I feel so guilty, but I hear I need to go. Yeah, it was good to have like the blessing of uh, everybody from the band that have been playing for so many years. I think you've built your career to that, you know, and we would never try to harm or take you out of this path because it was so deserved it was so deserved that i mean it was like a natural thing it was like a natural thing for us it is also good because all this megadeth fan base they started to wonder what's angry what's mm -hmm. that band so we kind of also received some attention and uh, it was a challenge for us to keep moving, to oh, yeah. keep writing songs, to keep improving, you know. Uh, in the very end, one of our common friends, Marcelo Barbosa, yeah, 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 yeah. he joined the band and I mean, we kept the spirit, we kept the, the, the concept, the the concept sound, everything. Yeah. We kept talking a lot about the business side, which is good. So you're part of the family, right? So we, we're we're still we're still there. We're still nice. 2021 is going to be 30 years. Yeah, right? like yeah. The, and like I, I, my I have a dream. Not a dream. It's not a dream. It's a plan. I want to have a concert. It doesn't need to be huge. It just need to gather as much musicians that were involved with the history of the band as I can as much as I can not only the band members but you not, mean like the yeah everyone all the like guys that recorded Marcos, the albums, and, but also and, the guys who recorded because yeah. you have like percussionists no before uh, before Kiko before you yeah we had Andrea. two previous two previous guitar players mm -hmm. I want them yeah yeah together Both on dress. we had a, another drummer Marcos Antunes before Ricardo I want all of them together. everybody that will take me a long road of <laughs> Calling diplomatic. <people. laughs> you good at apologies. <laughs> I'm the first one to say yes. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Go in front of the camera. Good. So that's <laughs> so now um, we have to stop this because we're probably gonna eat something or have dinner or we have to we have to, to help the babies your to kids put, to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> put the kids to sleep. They're probably <laughs> crying out. Where's daddy? Where's daddy? Bye bye. Bye bye. Aí, Rafael, valeu. Valeu. Isso aí. Obrigado, Bi. Vamos falar português agora, né? Pô, Ó, agora pode falar coisa. português. É o subtítulo subindo aí, os, os créditos. A música do Jornal Nacional. Tudo é, a gente põe uma música aí e fica o subtítulo. Cid Moreira. Cid Nossa, Moreira é figura, interrom... bicho. Cid Moreira... Você conhece ele? Não, mas ele tem feito algumas aparições assim na televisão. Ah, é? Ah, tô tá velhinho, fora. mas assim, muito carismático, aquela voz. Ele é muito engraçado, carismático. Eu sou fã.